Katie. Welcome to my channel. A big welcome to my channel. Today we're going to do something very special. We're going to show all the steps needed to make a balance staff for a pocket watch. So I guess the first question is why am I making a balance staff for this pocket watch? Why can't I find one? Well, it's a Regina watch company, Swiss, seven jewels, adjusted to two position, which is amazing for a Swiss watch. And it's been cleaned. It's ready to go. But there's no way I'll be able to find a balance staff that'll fit this balance. And both pivots were broken on this balance staff, so I'm going to have to make one. These are the four components you need to complete the balance staff. So you need the balance staff itself. This one was a attempt to re-pivot and it didn't work. You need the roller table for fitting onto the balance staff. You need the collet for the hairspring. And in this case, the hairspring is attached. And you need the balance itself for fitting onto the balance staff. And all this is done step by step on a lathe. I always store my old balance staff on a piece of Rodico so I could use it um, as a measurement tool while I'm cutting the new one on the lathe. Now because I'm so paranoid about losing parts, I'll use a separate jar here to hold the balance staff, the roller table, the hairspring, studded hairspring and call it and the balance itself and I'll keep these out of the way until I need to actually use them for cutting the uh, new balance staff. So what tools do I need to cut the balance staff? Well the first thing I need is a set of gravers. These are larger ones with a tri triangular face for the initial cut. I have smaller gravers here that I'll show you in a second and they are two millimeters round, two millimeters flat, four millimeters round, four millimeters flat I'll need a stone for finalizing the pivots. I've got two stones in there. I'll show you those in a second. Arkansas stone. I'll need a measuring device to determine what size of material I need for this new staff. I'll need a burnisher and file to finish off the balance staff. Let me just move over here. So I'll need a burnisher and file for finishing off the balance staff. I'll need a handle here to grab onto the gravers and I'll need some stock material here to pick that's equivalent to the widest diameter in the balance staff. So let's have a look at the gravers for a second. So this is the first style of graver. It's a triangular face graver and it's used for the initial cut of material uh, for the balance staff. This is the second style of graver where the end of this graver is four millimeters in width and that again is used for some of the initial cuts of where the balance rests on the balance staff. This is the brand name of the graver I just showed you. As I get closer to fitting the part on, be it the balance or the roller table, I use this graver here which has got a two millimeter width on it and it's flat and that's used to finalize the cut for, for this. I do not use this for the pivot at the very end. This graver is two millimeters with a rounded tip. So the tip right there is rounded and that is used for the conic shape of the pivot. When I've completed the pivot I do the cone shape as it tapers in or tapers out from the point of the pivot to the larger part, I use this to actually shape the cone. And then I go to, to the stones. This is the Arkansas stone I use to finish the pivots off. It's got a rounded edges and it's got sharp edges. So I do use the rounded edges as I'm completing the pivot where it enters the cone part of the pivot. And I use the sharp edges to remove the material near the tip of the pivot. So I can get the pivot down to the dimension I need. I use the Valorobi burnisher. This is to finish off the actual pivot. It's a metal burnisher for the blued steel. And the tip of this, you can see where it's rounded on the edge right here. And that tip is where you're entering, you're rubbing and you're close to the cone part as it goes up from the tip of the pivot, it starts to cone. 
you use the rounded part so you don't cut into the material. The other side is, is 90 degree angle, so that is not used at the, during the finishing of the pivot. This is a burnishing uh, technique I use, and it will complete, remove a little bit of material, but it'll also harden the blued steel as the last step. And you can see how this is not rounded back here, but as you move towards the tip of this burnisher, it is rounded. This tool also has a file on the end. I have sometimes used this file for much larger pivots. Um, if I'm doing a platform balance for a, for a clock, um, I'll use this because the pivots are much larger on those balances. And when I talk about much larger, I'm talking about 0.02 to 0.03 times larger. So if I'm, I'm looking at a 0.09 pivot for, for a very small pocket watch, I might be looking for a 0.12 uh, pivot for a uh, carriage clock platform balance. Then I use a measuring gauge for helping me select the material I need to actually uh, start the pivot off. And I only need a very small piece of material here, maybe one, two centimeters of material would, would suffice for a pivot and mount it up on the lathe in the uh, lathe collet. And before I forget, these are the handles I use to mount up the gravers that I showed you before for, for, the, uh, for doing the work. Now, as I cut the pivot or cut the balance staff, I use this gauge. It's called a duzium gauge. And the duzium gauge, small increments, small diameters here are reflected to a large gauge over here. So I use this device to quickly tell me how close I am to the size I need. Um, and this is for rough cuts. Now, you'll need a decent graver sharpener like this one here. So this is where the graver goes in. And you, sh and you sharpen that on a plate. I won't bring them here, but you've got diamond grit uh, plates that I have to sharpen gravers. Maybe I'll bring them here, but you'll need to do that to make sure the gravers are sharp as can be. And you'll also need a pair of tweezers for this action. The last thing you're gonna need is a jewel gauge. I'm missing one of my jewels. I'm gonna have to replace that, but this is a Burrell jewel gauge. These are priceless so when you get close to completing the pivot on the on the balance staff these are the gauges you use and you're going to probably start um, measuring this thing when you're when your pivots around 22 or maybe if you're really good you can get your pivot down to one one seven like point one seven or point one eight and then work your way down to 11 or 12 or whatever size pivot you need for this particular watch you're going to need to measure uh, the pivot or the jewel hole on the upper and lower balance uh, staff that's there right now because in this watch the pivots are not there so I can't assume that I know what the size pivot is for this balance staff so I'm going to have to take the balance take the the uh, staff sorry the movement out itself and then use a pin gauge to measure the hole size so you also need pin gauges so if you don't have pin gauges, you can use the upper balance cock and the jewel that's in there to actually determine the size of the pivot that you need to, to, to make to fit the upper balance. So you'll also need to use the, um, the lower plate right, to make sure that, that it fits as well. And you can actually use this on the lathe when the balance staff is being cut to fit it and look very closely to see if it fits properly. But my recommendation is to buy some pin gauges to be able to measure the jewel holes. Now my preference for measuring sizes is to get yourself one of these digital, analog and digital gauges here. And you really only have to measure the initial width or diameter of the blued steel to start off with because you're going to be using the actual balance staff that was broken to to actually do the cuts so you only need to measure that you may also want to measure the overall length of the balance staff so you can have the, the material ready in the balance ready to cut so that's a good idea as well I don't think you need to measure um, anything else because you're going to use the original one to do the cuts. So in my case here, it's going to be a little trickier because I've kind of 
ruin the pivots on the original one. So I I'm going to have to make some guesses on the length and see if I can measure the length between uh, the two uh, joules, upper and lower uh, balance joules. So I recommend you get yourself a, a decent uh, gauge here to measure to do the measurement. Now you're going to need a decent watchmaker's lathe and here I've got a very nice, I think it's a Bowley watchmaker's lathe and I've got a counter shaft on here and this counter shaft is going over to a sewing machine motor to drive it and this is a very nice uh, setup I have. You do not need the tailstock for this, but you do need a nice flip over tool rest. A non flip over tool rest will not work for making a balanced staff. It'll just be in the way too much. And then you need a full set of collets. This is uh, one of my, I have two sets of collets, but this is a full set of collets because you're going to need to have the initial collet that's grabbing the blued steel. And then you're going to, when you flip this over, to finish off, you're going to have to have a different collet to grab likely the um, hairspring part of the balance staff to work on the roller table part of the balance staff. So you need a good set of collets in here. I've got a nice set of collets all bagged in here. So these are the ones I use. They're very good. No problem. I've got some of my stock material in the back here. So that is absolutely necessary. So now you're going to need a reference material. If you've never made a balance staff before, this is the Watch Repairer's Manual by Fried. And there's a whole section, eight, if you know your Roman numerals, on how to make a balance staff. So this section goes through all the cuts, all the preparation of material, everything you need to know to make that balance staff. And once you've made the balance staff and adjusted it accordingly, there's a section on how to adjust a balance staff. So there's adjusting a balance staff. So that is pretty handy. And that's how to get the cone right here. And that was the file I showed you earlier and all kinds of other things. But the initial building of the balance staff is absolutely necessary. And then you've got to make sure it all works with the roller table in the right position to interface with the pallet fork. Um, this is a, a nice little diagram in this book here. So it shows the balance staff fitted in nicely. And if the, if the roller table is too low or too high, it doesn't work. It's just, it's a, it's a precise job. So you need a reference book. You should read the reference book again if you haven't made a balance staff or even if you've made one before because it shows you the measurements over here and it also shows you some of the initial cuts that you need to make. And when I make a balance staff, the first cut I make is the cut to hold the shoulder the shoulder to hold the balance itself. That's the very first cut. This is the one I make here. And this book shows you exactly what to do and when to do it and how to cut it. So, and it depends whether it's a friction fit balance or if it's a riveted balance. If you're making a new balance staff, you're gonna likely have a little bit of a friction fit on it anyway, but I recommend that you save some material to just spread a rivet over, over the balance itself once you're staking the balance back onto your new balance staff. So, so get that reference book out there and read it, read it, and read it again, and then go ahead and try to make your very first balance. Remember, if you screw up, you can always make another one. It does take three hours to make a decent balance staff. It may take more depending on how much work you need to do on the pivots. I find the pivot work is the hardest because it's the most sensitive. And in the next video, this will be part one um, you'll see how this works. Okay, so I may just do part one. Part two is cutting the raw balance staff and then part three will be completing the pivots because it's a it's kind of a an art and you've got to get good at it and you don't want to snap the pivot off or the balance is then useless. So let's get on with making a balance staff. I hope this video was useful but there's going to be video two and three as well on how to make a balance staff. Thanks a lot. Thanks for subscribing to my channel and I'll catch you in the next video. One last note. If you've got to make a balance staff, you've got to make a balance staff. You just need to dive into it. There's no hesitation. Get your lathe, get your tools and say, I'm going to learn how to do this and just do it. It takes a crap load of patience to make a balance staff and make that one work, one that works perfectly. So I'm going to show you uh, the process in the next couple of videos on me making a balance staff 
I have another video, and maybe two online in my channel that does show you me making a balanced app, but I'll try to be a little more comprehensive in how to do it with this particular series of videos on how to make a balanced staff. Without knowing how to make a balanced staff and without having a supplier that can supply you with a new one, you're not going to be able to repair vintage pocket watches. You need to learn this skill.